I've got a few more bag items here. Let's see what we got. I'm concerned about this thing. Looks like it's had a bit of a hard trip. Let's start with this thing here. Let's see what's in this bag. Well, we've got the ominous screwdrivers of cheapiness. And we have a laptop battery. Now, yeah. have a little look at it. See what the quality looks like. This one actually looks reasonable, actually. It's actually printed on. Some of the cheaper ones have got like laser etching. It's got this protection film on there too. Although it doesn't look particularly well put on there, so suspicious about that. I'm just checking the screw holes. No, it doesn't look like it's been used. It looks like it's brand new casing at least. Weight wise, yeah, I don't know. It feels like it's got full packs. Check the balance. Hmm, interesting. Seems to be very balanced one way. Oh, like, even there. There. So, that is about half the battery pack here, that side. Hmm. Do you think that there's actually not the full amount of soles in here? That feels a bit light. I'm going to go and weigh this. I'll be right back. Okay, I went and weighed this one. This weighed 294 grams. This Apple original one, which is faulty, it's, it's had its end of life. Um, this weighs 460 grams. And if I stick it in the middle, it pretty much balances, right? And then I'll say this one here really doesn't. There's nothing in this pack here. This is going to be empty. I think that is the battery. It's all done for show. So I'm not going to recommend getting this battery because I really don't think it's actually any good. What do they claim? 77 watt hours. Well, there's no bloody way. Because this is the original battery and this is 77 watt hours too. So this, I'm going to be making a claim against that. I shall dispute the uh, capacity because there's no way that this is the same as this one. I mean, sure, it's different. It's an aftermarket brand, that sort of stuff. You know, that's fine. But the capacity is definitely not there. I won't be recommending that part. Okay, see what's in here. Look, some MacBook parts. Ten of them. Can I read them? Give me a second. No, let's try to do it this way then. Try and get the light on it right. CD3210. I think there's like a power supply drive or something from that. From, from memory, I can't remember exactly. I think that's what it is. Alright, let's see what's in this thing. Looks like it's a local one. But I don't actually remember buying anything. I don't know, maybe I did. Oh yes. Now I remember. Now because of the latest Jedi movie, Star Wars movie coming out, I realised that I haven't actually seen this one yet. Star Wars. Oh look, it's doing face tracking. Excellent. <laughs> the Last Jedi. Yeah, focus on that. It's focusing on this. Because it's doing face tracking. You know, cover that one up. I haven't seen it yet. I didn't hear good things about it, but you know, we'll see. Don't, don't spoil it for me. No comments about spoiling it. Okay, add comments about spoiling it. I don't care. Or do I? I don't know. It's up to you. If you want to try and put a comment down there saying it's going to be crap or whatever, or, you know, anything that happens in it, you know, up to you. I, I do read all the comments. Now, as you can see from this thing here, it's had a bit of a hard trip. It's been crushed here. I'm going to zoom out slightly more. All right, so it's crushed here and it's like... Now this is a keyboard box. So there's a keyboard in here. I don't know what condition it's going to be in, but there's a keyboard in there. It may or may not matter, but it's not great. Let's see what it opens up like and see what the end result is. Now I've ordered three keyboards recently. I've ordered a couple of MacBook ones. I also ordered one for a computer I'm fixing for somebody else. So I'm not sure which one it is. It's come with 
sets of screws. Oh, these are the MacBook ones in. These are MacBook keyboards. There's two of them in here. So it might be okay, I can probably just flatten it back out again. <laughs> uh, you know, cause what could possibly go wrong with that? Oh my god. It's got a backlight as well. Sure, there's two. Oh, there's two there. Here we go. So there's two backlights, which won't really been affected by that bending. They'll be fine. Um, but these are looking a bit worse for wear, aren't they? They're probably still okay. I mean, the buttons haven't popped off. So I think it's been soft enough to be alright. So I probably can just, like, gently flatten it back out. I mean, the screws are holding there anyway. Just keep that way as well. Right, that's kind of flat again. Good enough to be flat. So there's not screws over the place to hold them anyway, so yeah, that's okay, that'd be alright. Much to my relief, now let's try the same thing with this one. Let's get it out of the bag, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> not quite the uh, the look you want when you, when you get a new keyboard turning up, you know, is it like a bit like one of those ergonomic ones, you know, where you the, the little Microsoft keyboards and they're all profiled. It's a bit like that, isn't it? You know. Oh dear, right. Hopefully nothing pops off. Kink just there a little bit. A bit there as well. I mean it's not too bad, like I said the screws will pretty much sort it anyway. But yeah. If it's if it's creased up around a screw hole then it might not work too well. I think that'll do. So as you can see you got the flex there which goes to the motherboard. Logic board, we want to call it, and there's the power button. So this is a 13-inch keyboard for the. I think that's 2009 to 2012. I think it does. So uh, yeah, I mean these are right. I've never hadn't had any problems. These are the US versions, I think. Yeah, US versions got dollar sign. So that's what I need to use. It's got a MacBook here which has got a bad keyboard on it, so I need to put that in there. I don't forget which one it is. I've forgotten. Right, let's see what's in this thing. This came from Poland, by the way. It's come quite a long way. Okay, that's wrapping off. Let's try and get in deeper. This ram does work well. Some decent packaging, it would seem. Hopefully, it's underneath it as well. It's got some foam, some fluffy insulation stuff as well. All right, a bit of bubble wrap. It looks to be all the way around it. It's got some um, peanuts underneath. That's okay, they're all contained, so don't shift it. I'll get this out of the box and I'll come back. Well, it's out of the box. Here we go. It's got a rough finish on it, actually. It's interesting. It's almost like rust, but it's not. I don't think. So as you see, massive heating on the back, I'm quite surprised by that. It is actually bigger than I thought it was going to be. Anyone that knows this kind of tilting bale knows exactly what brand this is already. Oh, another peanut under there. Oh, there they are. Oh, yeah, massive heat sink. That is surprising. This is like twice the size I thought it was going to be. I guess my perspective on the pictures was wrong. There's the underneath, there's the other side, and I suppose I'll show you the front. Here we go, it's a Phillips. 5716. Now what actually happened, there's a little bit of a story about this thing. I actually purchased a 5715. But I went to go and send it to me and found out that, oh, it's not there anymore. It's, you know, it's obviously like a surplus place thing, and somebody else has obviously got rid of it and taken it off, not taking the listing down or something. Anyway, so I said, oh, we've got a 5716 instead. So I said, okay, fine, send me that. So I've got a 5716, not a 5715. So it's a uh, pulse generator. Does up to 50 megahertz. So let's have a look at these. Yep. Knobs in the wrong place, which means it's probably been off at some point. That one's right, that one's right, that one's right, that one's right. And that's right. That's right. 
That's right. That's right. So it's interesting this one knob is in the wrong place. So I might um feels like slightly knocked loose as well. Get sliders on there for that. I think it's supposed to lock, lock together as well. I'm not quite sure. Something like that. All these little banana jacks, level control looks about right as well. Single shot. Wire for 230, there we go. Okay, cool. So I should be able to plug that straight in then. Let's do it. Let's plug it straight in. Let's see if it does anything. Any signs of life? Any signs of smoke? Also possible. Set for 2, 225, close enough. We have buzzing. Can't see a light. No light. Okay, so it might be doing something. Let's hook this up to a scope and um, see if there's any life in it. Okay, so I've got it hooked up on pulse output, and I, so far I've not had any luck. Now, if I center this like this, so it is shifting up and down, but there's no positive pulses. The negative is changing by a lot, right? Because you set them individually. I think it's like a maximum of 10 volts between them or something, all right? So it's, it's like there's no positive waveform on that side. It's a bit strange because the most it will go up to is zero. Right, it won't go, well, even just like below zero. I know it will go higher, but yeah, okay. Maybe I'm talking rubbish. But yeah, it's just um, being a bit weird. Nothing I do on here seems to make a difference, right? Delays, that sort of stuff, duration, times. I mean, this seems to start wiggling in the lines. If I, especially if I change this one here, maybe it changes very slightly. So basically, this is doing like nothing, all right? Better change transition times and so you've got nice sharp edges and duration also the pulse length and that's just not doing anything. All right, there's just nothing going on there. Let's check over here, check the clock. So if I do it on there, into my clock, now I'm getting pulses. I was doing something else before and it's different. Hold on. That change something? No, I've got some ripples on there. I know I had something before. All right, but again, nothing is really having much of an effect. Like the output just isn't there. All right, I'm getting a little bit like that. I've got a little bit of a waveform. Repetition time, but that's not what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be in pulses. So I tried different like switch positions, I and mean, that's like the most activity I get is that one. So, so I'll do those, it turns these ones off. But yeah, it's interesting. So let's chuck this in here, back on the clock. So you can see we're getting clock pulses at least. All right, so at least we're getting that. That doesn't affect those, does it? No, didn't expect it would. We can do manual pulses. So that part's working. So external gate, external triggering, triggering, there we go. So, because you've got these other inputs on here, external input. I mean, changing it around is making it trigger. But internal clock should just work. Oh look, the bolt started working. Interesting. Okay, so it's obviously not working properly. Well, I can change that, so that's working, the pulsing. That clock is adjusting. Delays. That's not really doing anything. Increase the time. No, it's not affecting the clock at all. Duration. No, it's not affected. Transition. Not affected because it's only just measuring the clock. Obviously, the clock is triggering the actual pulse section. As it should be. So the clock part is working, but nothing else. So you've got this auxiliary output. Let's see what that does. Okay, well that's looking like pulses. Don't have anything actually happening. No. That's not affected by those, so that's obviously only for the very output stage. Duration. Oh, that's doing something. So the duration is affecting the pulse length there. Delay. Can't tell if that's doing something or not. 
No, delay is not affecting anything. You probably can't see it very well, can you? Maybe just change views. Okay, there you go, that's what I'm getting there. Alright, so adjusting delay, not doing anything. Adjusting duration is doing something, so it's adjusting the pulse length. I change the actual, there you go. It's changing those pulses. So that's affecting the pulse length there at the auxiliary output. So I'll just do a trigger. Single trigger, that's the pulse it puts out. So it's half working, it's just like the output stage, the final output stage isn't working. In there, which it's just like low all the time. Or wherever these wherever I set these two, I mean it's just something there, see that noise? I mean there's definitely something going on there. But it just isn't working right. So yeah. It's a, uh, it's definitely a future project. Definitely a project. So I've found a electronic manual for this. So we'll see how it goes. Not too bad. Oh god, phone's ringing. Okay, so back to this now. You can see it's got like a crease line right there, which is what I need to try and get out. Oh, for fuck's sake. 